OK, so the recording has started. Um, I will now hand over to the chair, Councillor Adja Ovat. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to the licensing subcommittee today, the 4th of October. My name is Councillor Ajda Ovat and I'm the chair of licensing. Before we begin, if I can have those present to introduce themselves, starting with the councillors on committee, then the officers, the applicant and then the objectors. Firstly, I'll start with the introduction. I'm Councillor Ajda Ovat, member for Northumberland Park and chair of licensing. Members, if you can now introduce yourselves. Hello, I'm Councillor Lester Buxton and I'm the member for Crouch End. Hello, I'm Councillor Nick De Costa and I'm the member for Highgate Wars. Thank you. Now, officers, if you can introduce yourselves. Hello, good evening. I'm Del Barrett. I'm the licensing team leader. Uh, good evening. I'm Sadiqul Rahman. I'm the legal officer for Haringey Council. And I am Nazia Chowdhury, the Principal Committee Coordinator and Clerk to this meeting. Thank you. The applicant for Unit 1, please introduce yourselves. Um, evening, members of the committee. My name is Taylor, Richard Taylor. I'm a solicitor from Goss Chalks in Hull and I'm instructed by Deliveroo Hop. Evening. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everybody. My name is David Ives and I'm the Global Property Director for Deliveroo. Thank you. Good evening all, my name is Martin Priest. Um, I am property counsel at Deliveroo. Hello, everybody. Oh, hello, good evening everybody. My name is Simon Finn and I'm one of the objectors. I live on Wakefield Road, which is adjacent to the uh, street that's where, where Deliveroo wants to have a reunion. Yes, Mr Finn, I was just about to ask for objectors. So yes, you've already introduced yourselves. If there's another objector as well, if you can please introduce yourself. Audrey, you're on mute. There we go. Uh, okay, I'm Audrey Droysen. I live on Pembroke Road and Wakefield Road. Uh, I'm a resident of the area and chair of the Residents Association. Thank you. Um, before we move on, just to let you know that the application for variation of a premises license at Lounge 34 High Street, London N8 has been withdrawn from today's agenda. Now with the first item of the agenda, filming at meetings, please note this meeting is being recorded and will be available for public viewing. Second item, apologies for absence. Are there any apologies for absence? No apologies, Chair. Thank you. Third item, urgent business. Are there any urgent business? No items for urgent business, Chair. Thank you. Fourth item, declarations of interest. Do members have any declarations of interest? Thank you. Fifth item, summary of procedure. The procedure for the meeting has been emailed to all participants by the clerk. For the purposes of any members of the public watching, we'll first hear from the licensing officer. After that, the applicant will present their case to the committee and the committee and the objectors will have the opportunity to ask questions. Then the objectors will present their representation and the committee and applicant will have the opportunity to ask questions. All parties will then have the opportunity to sum up and then the meeting will conclude to allow the committee to deliberate and reach a decision. This decision will then be provided in writing within five working days of this meeting. Additionally, I'm going to note the ground rules for this remote hearing as follows. Please ensure your cameras are open and that you are muted when you're not speaking. If you have technical difficulties, please use the chat function. Please do not use the chat function for putting formal questions to the committee. If you wish to speak, please raise your hands and direct all communication via the chair. We will take all papers as read unless there is anything you wish to draw our attention to. All speakers will be allocated five minutes to speak. When speaking, please be succinct and do not exceed the allocated time unless you request for an extension of time, which is at the discretion of the chair. Please do not share addresses of speakers. In the event that there be several speakers for each party, please avoid repetition and perhaps consider having a spokesperson to address all concerns. Now onto the sixth item, which is the application for a new premises license at Unit 1 Range Mall Industrial Estate, Bernard Road, Tottenham, London, N15 4ND, Tottenham Central. Ms Barrett, please can you introduce the report? 
Thank you, Chair. As you said, this is for Deliveroo at Unit 1. They are requesting an, um, the ability to do the supply of alcohol Monday to Sunday, 7 a.m. till midnight. And of course, this will be for the supply will be off the premises. And this is for an online delivery type operation. Um, there will be no public access to the um, particular building at all, Chair. The, the um, application is at Appendix A within the pack. As you said, I know members have been through the pack. The representation from public health you will find at Appendix B. That representation has now been withdrawn and delivered through by Mr Taylor has agreed and accepted to all the matters raised by public health. You have left in the pack chair the, res the representations from residents. And of course, two of those residents are here this evening, but you're still able to consider what the um, other residents have said on the, the documents that are in the, in the pack chair. And just to remind the committee that it's not really the um, it's not really within the committee's gift to be considering any traffic related issues in determining in the, this matter. At 1.5 in the in the report chair, you have the options open to the committee which may be to grant the application as requested, to grant the application while imposing additional conditions or altering the application or the proposed operating schedule, or to exclude any license for activities, or to reject the whole, the whole or part of the application. Obviously, whatever that determination may be, the panel is required to ensure that it gives clear and cogent reasons for that. In terms of background, the premises is situated in an, in, in an industrial estate, as I said, it would operate the online delivery service. Planning have advised that the, um, the unit does not have any conditions attached to it in with regard to operating hours chair for this particular premises. At section three of the report here, you've got the licensing policy matters um, that I know the legal officer will be able to run through with you. And I know this panel is very much versed, well versed on that. Um, and in terms of uh, other considerations, Chair, um, just to remind the panel that Section 17 of the Crime and Disorder Act comes into to play here, as does the Human Rights Act, Chair. And there I shall leave the summary, Chair, if you have any questions for me. Thank you, Ms Barrett. Yep. Do members have any questions? Yep, Councillor De Costa. Uh, thank you for that, Dahlia. I just wanted to check with regards to the withdrawn representation from public from the public health. Um, were, were all conditions or all recommendations they made accepted by Deliveroo? More or less, Chair, yes. There's been there were some check, slight changing in wording from what um, public health had initially put through, but they worked themselves directly with Mr. Taylor to get those agreed. And the, and you have a, a, a copy of that in in the pack also. Thank you. Members, any further questions for Ms Barrett? Does the applicant have any questions for Ms Barrett? Uh, just one, Chair, if that's uh, if that's her, and it's just a point of clarification. Ms Barrett, this, this application has been um, uh, consulted upon properly, and the police have had a copy, environmental health have had a copy, uh, child safeguarding, planning, all had copies. Now, can you just confirm to the committee that there's been no representations from any of those responsible authorities? That's correct. I can confirm that the application has followed the um, procedure set out in the Licensing Act and those particular RAs have not made representation on this matter. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any further questions from the applicant for Ms Barrett? Uh, no, thank you. Any questions from the objectors for Ms Barrett? Thank you. Thank you. OK, we'll move on. Then. Sorry, we'll yes, have... I just have one question, oh, please. Yep. Sorry, I, I was look, fishing for my mute button. Um, <laughs> you, you say that, um, that that no one objected on child safeguarding uh, grounds. I contacted the headmistress of the primary school that's that's at the entrance of um, of Rangemore Road. Um, did she not make any representations at all? There are no representations from any schools at all. OK, that's fine. Thank you. It's just that I did inform her about the application. Thank you, Mr. Finn. Thank you. OK, we'll now move on to the applicant. Um, 
the applicant, if you could please um, introduce the application. Um, I'm not too sure who wants to speak from the applicant side. Is it just one speaker? Yeah, if it's uh, chair, if it's all right, I'm the hired help here. So okay. uh, if, if, if I can, uh, if I make the submissions, but I've got Martin and David here who can answer any operational questions that you may have. That's fine. Is it OK to do it within five minutes? Just that's the allocated time. And if you do need an extension, you can ask myself. I, I will. I, I will do my very, very best. I promise. Thank you so much. You may go ahead. Thank you. Well, um, members, uh, good evening. Um, I'll deal with this application, if I may, in three parts. Uh, first, the applicant, who we are and what we do. The second is the application itself and, and how we will promote the licensing objectives. And third, I'll just uh, comment on some issues raised in the letters of representation. So first, the, the applicant is Delivery Hop Limited online grocery delivery store. Now, you as a committee may well be aware that uh, as well as providing restaurant operators with a platform to deliver their food, Delivery also works in partnership with many established high street re, uh, grocery stores, Waitrose, Sainsbury's, Morrison's, Co-op, Boots, uh, and provides a platform and its self-employed delivery drivers um, so that those um, uh, grocery stores can also do deliveries. But what you might not know is that Deliveroo Hop Limited operates as a grocery supermarket in its own right. And what's proposed here is one of Deliveroo Hop's online grocery delivery hubs. This will be the eighth in London. All but one are in industrial estates. They've been operating for over a year now and with no problems whatsoever. And just before I get off details of the applicant, it's important that you know that the applicant takes its corporate responsibility very seriously through its full life campaign. It's delivered a million free meals to vulnerable people in March of, of this year, and it works with the Trussell Trust as well to uh, supply uh, food banks or to support local food banks. So that's who we are. Next, the application. Well, as Dahlia's just said, this is an application seeking to permit off sales uh, from seven o'clock until midnight. But two important things to note here. One, this is delivery only, no customer access at all. And two, Deliveroo can operate this business right now. It can already do online grocery deliveries. It can sell bread, milk, ready meals, everything across the board except alcohol. And all this, this application will do will extend the range of products that can be sold and delivered uh, to, to, to include alcohol products. And the question that I'll keep coming back to, members of the committee, is this. On the basis that Deliveroo Hop can deliver anyway, what will the effect be on the licensing objectives if that delivery basket contains a bottle of wine as well as groceries? Well, there we go. Let's go to now to how we promote the licensing objectives. You will have seen our operating schedule and our, our proposed conditions. You will have seen our operational management plan. I won't go into that. And you will have seen everything that you'd expect of a responsible national operator. Full CCTV, Challenge 25, full training, refresher training, multi-flag system to alert those who are delivering groceries that the package contains alcohol and to prior provide them with the tools that they need to ensure that that alcohol is only delivered to over 18s and to people who can accept that delivery and to provide records of sales and deliveries. But we've gone a step further here. We've liaised with the licensing authority itself and following their representation public health, and we agreed a package of conditions which are more prescriptive, uh, but we were happy to do that. And, and those conditions reflect what we do and how this site's to operate. Now, the list of conditions that's agreed uh, is, is all in one place, and it's in an email that I wrote to, um, to uh, the uh, local people who've lodged representations. And if I can ask you just to turn up page 50 in your um, agendas, we can just have a quick look at those conditions. 
Um, and this, th th these are, I, I suppose, specific uh, to, to this location, given uh, the issues that have been uh, raised with licensing and public health. So notices um, uh, to be displayed at all exits, requesting the delivery agents to respect the needs of local residents. Over the page, there's a specific one asked but for by public health that we uh, have signage uh, requesting riders to be mindful of the residents, the users of and visitors to Earlsmere Primary and the Priscilla Wakefield Care Home. Uh, we see uh, toilet facilities, I'm back on page 50 now, to be available for the riders to use. Well, we're going a step further than that, because here uh, we are not just providing toilets, but we're providing an, a warm inside area for riders to wait. There'll be refreshment, there'll be power for them to charge their phones, and the riders will be encouraged to wait inside. Uh, you'll see uh, there are requirements that the riders comply with the law and road use and parking. Well, that's not going to be an issue here because we have more parking here than we have anywhere else uh, at any of our other units. We have a large car park. There will be no need to wait on the road. You'll see conditions that uh, detail sales by internet and phone orders only, age verification, challenge 25, no public access, all deliveries to residential and business addresses. No Sorry, super Mr Taylor, we've reached five minutes. Do you have anything? Two you minutes. Need a little bit more. Yeah, OK. It's two fine. minutes. So there are all of the conditions. <laughs> They're all at the end. Of, so I'll move now to my comments on the representations. And we look at those, don't we, against the backdrop that no responsible authorities have objected, and that, as Dali has just said, the, the subcommittee can't consider traffic matters. So looking at those, we see noise caused by delivery vehicles. Well, is there any difference, members of the committee, to noise caused when it's bread and milk or whether it's bread and wine in that delivery uh, basket? And the answer, of course, is no. Hours of trade, we've just heard, we can do it already, and there's no restriction uh, from the planners, and that this is an industrial estate. We've heard about the proximity of the care home, who haven't objected. And again, what difference does it make what's in the bag? Same for the school, for Earlsmead. The school hasn't objected, despite Mr Finn's um, uh, uh, alerting them to this, and nor have child safeguarding. We see a possibility, don't we, of antisocial behaviour raised. Well, the experts in matters of crime and disorder, the people from whom you must take your advice on issues of crime and disorder, the police don't object. And then we get the unsuitability of the area. Well, this is in the middle of an industrial estate where we have all, where we have six out of seven of the existing ones and which trade without any difficulty whatsoever. So, Chair, I'm sorry I went over my five minutes. I bolted that as fast as I possibly could. I have David Ives here. I have Martin Priest, both of whom are very, very happy to ask any questions that you may have. And certainly if I can't help you, they will be able to. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you so much, Mr Taylor. Do members have any questions for the applicant? Yep, Councillor Buxton. Um, yeah, I have uh, I have two. Uh, so I'll do one and then pass it over to Nick. And then uh, if Nick doesn't cover it, then, uh, uh, then I'll come back. Um, so on the challenge, uh 25 policy i understand that um you have a lot of procedures in place however um the the difference being that it were in waitrose sainsbury's or a high street um supermarket or a shop or a restaurant then uh the person refusing is on in safer territory so to speak um, so there will be uh, security guards there, there'll be other members of staff, whereas a delivery driver is by themselves going to somewhere where there might be a lot of people. Um, so therefore, safety is an issue. And I'm um, just wondering whether there are more stringent um, ways of ensuring that uh, under what well, the challenge 25 is adhered to that drivers feel safe challenging 25 uh, challenging 25 um and yeah what kind of stricter if there are stricter um measures that that can be in place in those situations 
And now I, I can bash on about the multi flag system and all of the uh, procedures that are in place. But I wonder, David, if you could just give me a nod as to whether or you'd be more comfortable answering that. It's entirely a matter for you as to what we do to ensure um, at so many levels that uh, we, we sell and we deliver alcohol only to persons who effectively uh, satisfy our Challenge 25 policy. Yeah, thank you. And um, so thank you for the question. So um, as Richard as Mench has mentioned and as is stated in our application, our OMP, etc., we do have a multi-flag procedure for ensuring our Challenge 25 policy is carried out on the on the on the initial sale, then delivery and completion of delivery for the sale of alcohol. Um, as part of that, the the delivery riders um, are flagged uh, through their application that um, shows that they need to check identification and that must be inputted uh, sorry must be in the date must be inputted into their app before they're able to complete the sale so on the challenge 25 um procedure we are very comfortable that a sale will not happen unless unless um evidence has been provided that the purchaser is over 25. To address your safety, um, your safety concerns, I think there's a couple of things which are important to note. We do not allow any um, any sales of alcohol or any deliveries that will be delivered to non-residential or business addresses. So um, sales can only go to residential and business addresses. So um, from a safety perspective, we wouldn't have um, riders delivering to uh, you know somewhere open or the middle of nowhere, etc. Um, and also. Um, I guess from a safety perspective as well that's important to note is um, there is a very clear chain of uh, proof as to who is involved within the purchase and who is involved in a delivery. So if a rider um, was to experience any problems which which we don't have experience of then there is a clear um, uh, that pe people in that situation would know that they have ordered that and it is very clear that it is them as an individual who has asked the rider to who has ordered, made an order. The riders come there. And any problems that arose, it would be very clear that um, that individual was involved, and um, we believe that to be a, a fairly strong deterrent to that kind of situation that you were um, wondering about. And and just just to add to that, uh, if the challenge on the doorstep is not satisfied. What, what happens is any alcohol is removed from the shopping and the shopping is given over sans alcohol. Sorry, I don't quite know why I lapsed into French there. I do beg your pardon. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Taylor. I've, um, Councillor de Costa, I, I just have a couple of questions before I move on to yourself. Um, my first question is regarding the type of vehicles used, because I, I noticed that the residents have raised concerns about mopeds and motorbikes. Um, just wanted to get clarification as to what type of vehicles are used. Um, and the second question is, um, you mentioned that the, the other hubs that you have in different locations in industrial states don't have any problems. My query is, do those hubs that are located in industrial states have any residential areas nearby? Thanks. Should I take that one, Richard? Yes, please. Yeah, um, so to uh, the second, sorry, what was the, could you just re repeat the first oh, question? Sorry, I was so the first question the was one. the type of vehicles that are <laughs> oh, used. Oh, sorry, yeah, sorry, yeah, thank you. Yeah. yeah, sorry. So in terms of type of vehicle, so any um, roadworthy vehicle um, can be used for the delivery of our products. So what we find in London locations, obviously, as this is one, is predominantly um, that is done via push bike, via um, roadworthy and legal electric bikes, um, and also via mopeds, um, uh, whether those are petrol or electric depends on the rider. So we have a mix across um, across our platform of, of what our riders use. Um, in some locations, cars are also used. Um, that is much less frequent in see, more urban London locations than in perhaps more regional, um, regional locations. Um, to answer your second question, of the uh, of the eight sites that we currently operate in London, um, of which uh, seven are in industrial locations, the eighth of which we've just opened actually yesterday um, on New Oxford Street in central London. Um, so it would also uh, be part of your question. Um, they are all 
quite proximate to residential locations. So whilst they are in industrially um, industrial class properties, uh, we operate in Vauxhall, um, proximate to, uh, to residential populations, in Maida Vale, very close to residential populations, in Battersea, in Bermondsey, in Wandsworth, in Hoxton, um, and in New Oxford Street, as, as I just mentioned. So whilst we are, um, whilst we typically put these um, sites within industrial areas and within industrial buildings, by the nature of, to, to be honest, by the nature of the London locations that these are in, they are always quite close to residential populations. So we, we try to select sites responsibly, so they are not right in the middle of res residential streets, et cetera, but they are often and all, almost always proximate to residential populations. Thank you. Councillor De Costa, did you have any questions? Um, with regards to uh, on page 31 of the pack, um, which is your submission with regards to noise, um, you state that noise levels will be monitored to ensure they're acceptable at all times. How do you how do you do that? Sorry, should I, should I, sorry, 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 I was <laughs> turning up. Do you, I mean, yes, I mean, yeah, the operational management. It's through, gone. Oh, sorry, I can say it's, it's through our, the operational operations of our site. So we are um, very strict on the operations of our sites and of the people that come to them, um, our riders and the staff that work within them. Um, we are very aware of um, the Deliveroo brand name. It's a brand that is very well known across, well, across London, across the UK. Um, it's something that we are very careful to protect uh, the reputation of our brand by ensuring that the behaviour of people seem to be representing us is appropriate and in line with the um, our policies and procedures of a company will portray. That includes within the sites that we operate within our own uh, ownership and management, that this would be one, um, behaviour around the site where people park, we put signs up, um, we don't just put signs up, we do put signs up to encourage that behaviour, but also the site teams are regularly A, monitoring CCTV um, from inside to see what's going on outside, but also are regularly going out of the door into our yards um, to make sure that um, noise is acceptable. Um, now, that is a subjective thing, of course, but we are regularly monitoring that. We are um, Our site operations teams are regularly interacting with riders as they are in the car park to ensure that these policies are um, are abided by. Thank you, yep, thought, Councillor De Costa. Thank you. Then, just last question um, <coughs> from me. Uh, I, th I think, for the moment at least, um, and I wasn't sure. I haven't seen this within the pack. If there are concerns for local residents about what is happening on site, what's the es escalation process? Because obviously, if you if you order something from delivery, you can do a help on the app if something goes wrong. But what's the case for residents around? What? How can they engage with? Delivery hop if they have concerns about what's happening there. Of course. So look, we are in any site we operate, and and to, for the same reasons I just said to the previous question, we are um, we we always want to be a good neighbour in the communities that we serve, and we are a business that serves communities. We we as a business don't exist unless we have happy neighbours and happy residents to whom we deliver to regularly. Um, what we would encourage is anyone who um, has a uh, an issue or has noticed something either to make contact through our co our corporate kind of communications channels that you would be able to very easily find on our website or or quite honestly to simply pop into our site and we have a site team that would uh, for all the hours we would be operating we have delivery employed site personnel who would very happily uh, listen to any um, any issues any complaints and would direct you to people within our business that could um, engage with local residents to ensure that any uh, anything's investigated and, um, and any solutions found. Thank you. Um, any other questions? Yes, Councillor. Uh, yeah, um, in terms of the licensing hours, so supply of alcohol from 700 to uh, midnight, um, are there any restrictions on um, purchase of alcohol before, say, midday? I'm just thinking about, um, you know, people ordering purely alcohol uh, at 7 a.m. in the morning and uh, whether that does feed into uh, a public health um, thing, whether there are going to be any restrictions that has to be uh, included in a, um, a set of groceries or whether um, residents, uh, whether uh, customers, sorry, could 
buy a six pack at 7 a.m. in the morning. Well, this is just like councillor um, uh, uh, Tesco's and Morrison's and Asda and Waitrose. You know, um, the full product range is available throughout the times that it that it can be taken. And the Home Office is, of course, very clear on this: that shops, stores, stores and supermarkets should be able to sell their their full product range across the board, unless there are good reasons based on the licensing objectives. As you mentioned, public health. Public health had no problem with the hours that we are proposing, and indeed, nor of any of the other responsible authorities. So the idea is that the full product range is available uh, across the board, and people shop at different times you know you just just because you're buying at seven o'clock in the morning doesn't necessarily you're drinking at seven o'clock at seven twenty does it thank you any other questions from members thank you uh the objectors do you have any questions for the applicant yep mr finn Oh, hi. Uh, yes, I've just got a couple of questions for you. Uh, you will have modelled this. You will have done a business model for it. What is your anticipated rider um, um, riders per hour, particularly at the late evening times? How many are you expecting to visit to to pick up orders? Well, well that will depend on demand. You will have modelled for it, though. Well, we're, what we're dealing with here is a premises licence application where we cannot and do not need to uh, provide any details of traffic. This was an issue that we had with public health. We dealt with it with public health. Um, I, I don't have those figures here with me today. Okay, so I understand. Uh, secondly, the breakout area, which sounds very nice for the riders, I'm pleased to see that you're going to give them toilets because that's obviously a, a public health issue as well. If they didn't have access to that, and I'm sure that they will appreciate it. How many riders have you, put, you uh, provided um, space for? Um, I don't I don't know the answer to that. Yeah, I can I can tell you that. Um so I guess the first thing that's quite important to note is the um technology that delivery uses and the algorithm that we use in terms of our rider when we call riders to site and when we have orders placed is such that we um uh, the technology is such that it um brings it is brings riders to the site at the point where right uh, where orders should be available. So the whole premise of, of this and any of our other sites is not to have lots of riders hanging around all the time. That being said, you know, sometimes there will be multiple orders and there will be multiple riders there at the same time, or there could be a slight delay of a minute or two for orders and there will be people waiting. And, and if the riders need to use um, facilities, they are very welcome to and it's provided. So um, the space is. Um, it's you know it's it's pretty it's pretty big. I understand. Space, I understand, but um, we'll, we'll, we'll all we'll all, we'll all be aware. You know that I understand how your algorithm works. I'm more than aware of how of, the, of you, how you try to manage it. But the but what actually does happen in principle is if you if you've got a high a high turnover and a high volume um, operation, then just like you say at McDonald's, uh, where the riders will wait outside to 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 get those jobs because that yeah. because it's done by proximity. Yours, sure. is I mean, we, yours is a proximity algorithm, isn't it? Yeah, and I, I, I don't know if you've looked at the plan that's in our OMP. I mean, we have the 250 square foot. I know it. <laughs> okay, well, what I can tell you, what I could um, encourage you to have a look at the plan, because that will show you that we've got a, a 25 square meter customer area, um, which is pretty big, to be honest. That's quite a lot of people you can I know have in there waiting. Well. Oh, okay, cool. Well, that's um, that's how we, uh, you know, that's how we've designed the site with the responsibility in mind for the management for the issues that you're concerned about, um, and we we feel that to be very suitable in terms of size and, and pretty spacious, to be honest, in terms okay. of ha having okay. a number, a, a, a lot of riders in there at the same time as required. I'm just all I'm all I'm, so I'm, I'm just, I know I have one more question. Sorry. And yeah, how many actual? Could, yeah, how Hume, many actual come through me. Oh, sorry, yeah. chair. So sorry. Um, um, what I wanted to know was I, um, uh, how many actual delivery hop members of staff do they anticipate being on site? So that um, that would depend on the time of the day and the day of the week. So we we staff you know according with, with when we'd be busier, um, but most of the sure. time there wouldn't be there wouldn't be any fewer than uh, than I, I think six on site, um, and as required that will be increased. And security uh, staff. Uh, Mr. Finn, if you can just keep oh, your um, your questions succinct, and if you can please um, come through me uh, with any further questions. Okay, um, do you have that, any I... additional questions now? No, I just wanted to... to know there was any security staff there. Okay, yep. So we'll leave it as that as the final question, and then I'll move on to Ms. Troyson. So, yep. 
if you could just answer regarding so, the security stuff. Yeah, so we, we don't have specific, you know, third party security staff employed. We don't we don't have the experience of needing that. We, we manage these sites through our experienced and responsible site teams who um, carry out our operational management plan in all the sites that we have and would do the same here. Thank and just you. And, and just, 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 just remember, this is not a site to which the public have access. The only people who would have access to this site are deliverers' their own staff and the self-employed delivery uh, drivers. Uh, and therefore, on a risk assessment basis, the chances of there being any difficulties, the need for any security, are minimal. Thank you. Um, I'll move on to Miss Joyson. Um, yeah, I uh, noticed on the Haringey uh, website uh, under licensing that there have been a similar uh, application from Deliveroo Hub uh, for deliver a delivery of alcohol to 12 at night, and that's been refused. Do you know why it was refused? Was this, this was in Hornsey? Sorry, Chair, can I just clarify? Yes, I have I'm sent sorry. that information out to the residents also because Ms. Joyson did raise it in a complaint that she'd submitted. So just to clarify, the Deliveroo Hop in Hornsey does in fact operate and it does have a license, has had a license since 2019, I believe, I put in the response that was sent out. Yes, they do deliver, but they will refuse to extend the license to alcohol. Can I, can I sorry, can I, I think that... Sorry, I'll go through the chair. Chair, I, I, yes. I did look on the Haringey site and the, the, uh, the Deliveroo Hub um, Enterprise in Hornsey applied for alcohol license to, to deliver to alcohol, I think, to 12 at night, midnight, the same, and they were, were refused. And I just wanted to know if anyone, if, uh, if the applicant or anyone else knew why it was refused. That's yeah. not a Deliveroo Hop site. I understand that that's an addition site, which is a dark kitchen. Well, it, it said it's deliver a hop. Sorry, Chair, it did say yeah. deliver a hop on the license. It's on the Haringey website at this very moment. Yeah, just to be clear, the deliver a hop itself in N8 does have a license to sell alcohol and is operating and has been operating since 2019. But they were the dark kitchen. The different is a. It's called deliver as well, but it's a different a different operation. It's not a deliver a hop. Okay. Okay. And aren't, aren't we getting off the point here? Aren't we concentrating yeah, yeah, on this right, yeah. application think, in this location? I think, yeah, I, I agree. I think we need to just keep to this application itself and, and and the licensing objectives as well. So we need to just be clear with that. Do you have any further questions with regard to this application? No, no, questions. no questions. Thank you so much. Okay, we'll move on now to the objectives now. Uh, Mr Finn, you can go first and then it'll be a Miss Joyson. If you could each please keep to five minutes, we will then have questions after all the objectors have spoken. So, Mr. Finn. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Sorry about before, I'm out of practice on formal meetings. Um, I'd like to raise the following objections. Um, some, of the, some of my fears have been allayed, but I still have some core objections uh, around this application. Um, much has been made about the fact that they can start delivering now from seven till midnight every day. That The fact that there is no planning considerations currently is because the previous business only was um, Tops Tiles, I believe, and no business um, in that area has actually operated at those hours. The fact that the planning department has not uh, imposed any conditions is because no previous business has actually asked to you to do these hours. Um, that's a concern for the planning department to agree, but that's why there aren't any previous conditions. It's not that businesses have been operating without any any problems from 7 a.m. till midnight. That is not the case. There are no businesses around there that, that use these hours. The core hours would tend to be from 7 a.m., I would say, until around 7 in the evening. No Sunday trading at all. There's only one business on that trading estate that actually trades on a Sunday. I think that's um, one of the uh, home uh, tiles places. All of the others are closed. They're all closed up by seven o'clock in the evening it is completely quiet around there with regard to the gentleman's um um condition about about what kind of vehicles they use they do, do they do have a wide varied amount of vehicles um they they can't tell me what the model is for how many they expect to come per day but it will be a high volume of mopeds um delivery drivers delivery hop drivers are by nature they are self-employed 
whilst I appreciate they can put lots of things in place for while they're on the premises, the second they leave those premises, they are still private citizens. They can go about their business as they please. So I appreciate what they're saying about within the premises and within the car park. But the second they leave there, they could even literally stay on the street outside and Deliveroo has no control over what they do, how they behave or you know, um, all the behaviour that, that may that may bring late at night to that area. Uh, in terms of the, the school and the care home, this is a single access road. There is only one access road to uh, Rangemore Road Industrial Estate. All of that, all, everything must come down Rangemore Road, which does pass a primary school, which does pass a care home for the elderly. I did go in and speak to the manager for the care home. Initially, she was quite... Um, quite outraged no I won't say outraged she was quite you know she said oh that is a matter of concern for us because they have residents on the front side of the building and the side of the building that have residents she then got representations from her head office that told her not to put in any objections but the actual manager she did raise some concerns with me and she was pleased that I'd raised it to her but then she was told by her head office not to put them in um, just for clarity um, the nearest residential building I measured it is 75 meters away so it's less than 100 metres to the nearest residential buildings in two directions than the, to the south side. It's much further, but to, to the east, west and north, it's a, about 100 metres. Um, but my main concern is I understand what you say about this. This is just purely for licensing, but um, currently the, the unit is not operational. So we have no idea of what impact this is going to have on our area because it's not currently an operating business that he's simply now asking for an alcohol license. It is the business is not up and running. So we don't know what the impact is going to be. And finally, I would say to the committee, if you are mindful to grant this license, I would ask you to impose uh, some restrictions around the hours to normal hours uh, of business for, for alcohol sales. I understand it's not for open to the public, but it will be a high volume, high turnover, high amount of, of vehicles and people going to act irrespective uh, bicycles or whatever going to this site a reasonable hours of business license would would be for, for alcohol sales I believe it includes cigarettes as well doesn't it the license application chair I think yeah um, also sorry slightly last thing because it does in include high ticket items high value ticket items the safety of the riders is a concern which is why I asked uh, about uh, the security outside because if people know that they're carrying high value items, they're, they're, their safety obviously is a concern as well. And that's me. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Finn. Before we go, move on to questions, I just see your legacy hands are both up. So if you could just Sorry, put that you, down. See how much of practice. <laughs> is it gone? Y yes. Uh, well, Miss Joyson's is. Uh, Mr. Finn, oh. your one is still showing. Sorry about that. And let me clear it. I'll try and clear it. OK. Be yeah. So before I move on to questions, Ms. Joyce, and you've got five minutes as well, if you can make your representation. Yes, I made this objection uh, from my own personal account, but I am chair of the Residents Association. So I know and I've talked about um, uh, the objection with a number of them and their concern, too. I think our biggest concern was around public nuisance because we were sure that we have a light industrial state, but there wouldn't be problems in terms of uh, noise and in terms of, you know, sort of fumes and smokes and so on by the sort of industry. And so far, that's been pretty much the way things have been. But we have had a, had a really, I mean, went through about a year of this where people, uh, because this is the one-way systems, um, motorbikes were using Rangemore uh, Road and Wakefield Road, but Rangemore Road too, as a one-way system to to basically um, zoom up and down on their motorbikes. And I know that we can hear it. I mean, we're so close to the Industrial Strait, but the Industrial Strait is literally uh, across the street from me. And have motorbikes going up and down that road at, until midnight. I know I'm going to be disturbed. I know other residents are going to be disturbed. So, and this was didn't seem to be the deal that we made <laughs> with Harringay those many years ago about having an industrial uh, industrial estate that we have noise until midnight, and that's a real concern to us. And that's my objection that it, that I would go along with Simon that if we're going to 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 grant this that we should 
you know, we should grant it. Uh, well, I, you know, I would think that the whole um, delivery hop should, should only be operating from the normal working hours between seven and seven because motorbikes going up and down. Nobody on the estate has that. Uh, in, uh, and nobody, uh, I know none of the other industries on the um, industrial estate are operating all night long and having motorbikes go back and forth. There's going to be quite a disturbance. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Ms. Joyson. Okay, so do members have any questions for the objectors? Yep, Councillor Buxton. Thank you, Chair. Um, <clears throat> so, um, as uh, Mr. Taylor said in uh, his uh, deposition, whatever you want to call it, um, it's, I mean, we're not dealing with the business hours, we're dealing with the alcohol sale. So, I just want to know from you both what, and uh, I, I note that um, Mr. Finn said that uh, they're not operational right now, but what what will alcohol, the sale of alcohol in your eyes, change this, uh, change about this? Because we're not dealing with opening of business hours, we're, we're just dealing with the licensing of selling of alcohol. So how does selling alcohol change it? Are you asking me? Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Simon. Oh no, you you please, Audrey. You're the you're the residents' association. You can answer that. Um. Well, we did when this came. We because we were totally unaware that Deliveroo Harp had even had you know, permission to be on this premises. We the first thing we knew about was a sign and saw a sign up, a little tiny sign, <laughs> saying that this this uh, license had been uh, uh, sort of uh, applied for. But um, I, I, I mean, I, I go back to saying that I, I think that I would say that to the light, to whoever up, uh, who uh, whoever operates the industrial estate, and I think it's Haringey has sort of sort of sublet it to a, um, a sort of agency that that the the, the, the hours be for for for, for, for delivery hop. Uh, in total, to be from seven to seven, and and and, and so that we don't get into because it, yes, they're going to be delivering groceries. I, you know, I think probably they're going to be delivering alcohol probably more at night than any anywhere else. But but I, I, you know, I would see, I would ask, if possible, that that or we're asking, if possible, to have the hours restricted to the normal working hours of the industrial estate, which is seven to seven. And I would I would also add to that. There's a reason deliverer are asking for this license to be from 7 a.m. till midnight and not from 7 a.m. till 10 or 7 a.m. till 9. And that is because their business model will show that the highest volume of their sales will be late at night time, which is why they want it till midnight. It probably if they could, they would ask for it to be 24 hours a day. So while I understand the solicitor's premise that people can order things at any time of day and they're not necessarily going to drink it, they will have modeled for this. And the reason that they're asking for it to be till midnight is because because that is when their high ticket sales items are for sale. So if then we're simply facilitating a business to be to operate ex massive extended hours simply because for, for the sale of alcohol and cigarettes, then that but it's going to be detrimental to the to the wider neighborhood as a whole, then that's why it's a licensing matter. Thank you. Councillor De Costa, do you have any questions? Um, no, Councillor Buxton asked my question. OK, my my question is basically I can see that the um, that the applicant have put in an operational management plan and they've also, you know, um, agreed to terms um, with the responsible authorities. And I know you've mentioned that um, that you, you're worried about the impact that having the hub will have on on the area, but I mean, I can see that they have gone further to ensure that, you know, any issues are kind of, there's a mitigation of any issues and, you know, um, any impact is kind of um, addressed. But what further points or measures would you be looking for in order to mitigate these possible future issues that you're concerned about? What are you looking for? That's my question. Is it yes? You want one? Yes. Yeah, 
Well, I would go along with what, what Simon said, and I think he would say the same thing that we, that we have, and that's the feeling of the residents in the area that that uh, that the that we have a seven to seven business hours and so that we don't have motorbikes all night long we've i mean if, if anyone went to the police they'd find out they had a, we went for a year with the police involved to stop the motorbikes using using rainbow road as 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 a speed through and we know that we can hear them because we, we've been through it before so that's what i would add that's what i would say you know to limit the hours from seven to seven and can I ask, Chair, um, if, for example, I, I understand you grant the license and I'm not fully or fair with li licensing for, for alcohol and stuff like that. But say, for example, it could all go perfectly and we could with this all could be, uh, you know, perfectly fine and, 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 and no trouble at all. But what is our recourse if it isn't fine? You mentioned one of the councillors very kindly asked about about what was the complaints procedure, which I understand. But where do we stand? legally in terms of then getting the license made taken made more restrictive if it is a massive problem and it does turn out that it is because of mostly riders are coming to collect alcohol and cigarettes late at night is it through the police which who have who are now only a responsive force they don't really interact in in in, in so many matters to do with say for example noise and antisocial behavior that then falls to the council which is also restricted in terms of numbers of staff and and also what they can and powers that they have thank you Mr. I I think Ms. barrett's there to address oh. your yeah clarify it for you Thank you, Chair. So the the course of action that will be open would be the review process. However, in um, wanting to initiate a, a review of a premises license, there, there needs to be evidence to support um, how that particular license premises is failing to uphold and promote any of the four licensing objectives. So, you know, that evidence would need to be gathered and amassed. Um, an application form is then filled in and submitted to the licensing authority, which then will kickstart what's called the review process. Thank you, Ms. Barrett. Does the, does the applicant have any questions for the objectors? Uh, I don't, Chair, on the basis that we've now got off the sale of alcohol and we're now into traffic and motorbikes which i will deal with all of that in my closing but i'm not going to ask any questions thank you very much indeed. okay any other further points of clarification from any other parties yes councillor buxton um yeah sorry i didn't ask this right at the beginning i think it's um probably uh towards uh dahlia um uh the sale of alcohol at what point is the sale done is it when the order is made on the app or was it whether when it arrives at the person's uh, house. Right, so the the reason why the unit is being applied for is because the law says that it's the place, it's the point from which the, the alcohol is appropriated to the customer that needs to have a license. So therefore, that's why the unit itself is being applied for, because that's where it will be stored and then taken from there. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions for the objectors? OK, thank you. We'll move on now to the conclusion summary points. Can each party now sum up, starting with the licensing officer, then the objectors and finally the applicant? Please keep succinct. Thank you. So, Ms. Barrett, if you can go first. Ted, my only thing was a matter of clarification, really. Um, you know, that the mention of, you know, license of hours being seven to, to seven, um, but obviously, Mr. Taylor, I think, has already touched on this, that obviously with the license in that 2003, all of that was washed away. And the whole point of that legislation was that there was a more, you know, freer, more, um, a more responsive kind of a regime put in place under the license in that 2003. So standard licensing hours are no longer exist, which has been mentioned here about standard licensing. There are no such things as standard licensing hours anymore. Thank you, Ms. Barrett. Now the objectors, Ms. Joyson, I can see your hand up, so you may sum up, please. Well, I mean, I just want to point out that if this operation starts and then we decide that it's, it's unbearable, it's going to be it's a huge amount of effort, you know, to then collect for us as, re 
us as re residents to collect all this information and put it in that application that there'd be a review. It's an awful lot to ask, I think, of, of people living in this area. I mean, I'm retired now, but most people are working around here, so it would be a, a really onerous. Um, and I think, um, you know, the fact that the law changed in 2003 well, we were not. We weren't informed about that. We weren't told. Uh, we weren't asked. So we have no idea that that suddenly we're going to be having, you know, sort of operations at, at, until midnight around here. And if we had known that, you know, at, at the point where we they were setting up the industrial estate, then, I mean, that would have been a point of of uh, to to be considered. So. Um, Again, I go back to that. Um, I, I, I think if, if uh, I think we, sh as much as possible, we should be limiting the, the, the amount of motorbike, if we have to go along with this licensing, the motorbike traffic late at night. And I think not delivering alcohol would be a way of limiting that traffic. That's Thank what you. I Thank you, Ms. Joyce. And Mr. Finn, if you can sum up, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, just to say that um, I understand that you can't consider traffic, but you can consider location. I clarified this with, with, with Dahlia, I believe. Uh, you, you, location is something you can consider. And if you deem this to be not be a suitable location, you cannot you cannot grant the license. So while traffic isn't in its, in its own context and it, uh, 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 something you can consider, it, it, the location can be. And I would put it to you that this is not a suitable location for a, a license to be granted from 7 a.m. till midnight because of its proximity to residential homes and the impact that that would have when this when this is, this business is eventually up and running. It's not up and running right now. We have no idea what the impact will be and I, I anticipate it will be quite severe. Thank you, Thank Mr. You. Finn. Ms. Barrett, do you have a point of clarification? Well, can I just um, extend that? So my response was yes, location can be considered, but within the context of how that then impacts on the four licensing objectives as with everything for licensing. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Barrett. And now the African, if you can please sum up. Uh, thank you very much. And I'll be as brief as I possibly can, but we have rather got off the point here. Uh, Section 182 guidance um, says that the authority's determination should be evidence-based. Well, that follows the case law, doesn't it? Her honest, uh, Mrs. Justice Black in the Thwaites case said we, we determine applications on the basis of real evidence, not anticipation, not supposition, not guesswork, not what might happen, but on the basis of real evidence. So what we need to look for in this case is what is the real evidence relating to the sale of alcohol from these premises? And just before we get off the Home Office, as Dahlia's just said, the Home Office says, as far as ours is concerned, that, and it's paragraph 10.1.5, stops, sh shops, stores and supermarkets should normally be free to provide sales of alcohol for consumption off the premises at times when the retail outlet is open for shopping, unless there are good reasons based on the licensing objectives for restricting those hours. So what is the evidence here? We're now talking about restricting some hours. So where has this evidence come from? Well. It's not come from any of the experts. It's not come from the police. It's not come from uh, environmental health. It's not come from the planners. It's basically just come about arbitrarily this evening. The evidence in this case is this. You have a nationally renowned operator operating seven of these delivery hubs already in industrial areas with residents proximate with no problem whatsoever. Cold, hard fact. Whatever Mr. Finn says about, oh, he anticipates there'll be a problem, you only have to have to go to any of the others. There are no problems. That's evidence, good evidence upon which you can base a, a decision. This is an applicant who's worked with the licensing authority to agree a package of measures beyond what it normally offers because of this location to promote the licensing objectives. And this is an application, again, very good evidence, that results in no representations from the police. Very important. 
the police, according to the Home Office guidance, are your main source of advice on matters of antisocial behaviour and well, crime and disorder. So nothing from the police, nothing from env uh, environmental health, the experts in issues of noise. This is a this is a company that does this and the evidence is it does it without any difficulty whatsoever. What is the evidence against in this case? And against what? Against the sale of alcohol. And I come back to where I started. What difference does it make what's in that delivery bag? That's all we need to look at here. This isn't about mopeds. These premises can open and do this now, irrespective of what Mr. Finn says, what Ms. Droysen says, what anybody says. It could do this 24 hours a day if it wanted, but it doesn't. It wants to be able to serve the customers of this area with their groceries, and if that includes a bottle of wine or a pack of beers, then absolutely fine. What difference does it make what's in the bag? You've already heard, Dahlia said, it says so in the report, traffic issues are not issues to be taken into account here. And the last thing that we heard is, oh, do you know what? You shouldn't, you, you shouldn't grant this because we might have to review it. That's too much effort for us to do. Well, you can't refuse applications or curtail legitimate businesses on the basis that someone in the future may find it too much effort. To, to take a stand about it. The law is very, very clear. As Dahlia has said, if there are any uh, uh, objections, if there are any difficulties, anybody at any time can call for a review of this premises license. So, on the basis, members of the committee, that there is no evidence whatsoever relating to alcohol sales, any difficulties with alcohol sales, any problems with the operator, any problems with the operator operating this anywhere else. All of the evidence points towards a grant in the terms sought. And if there are any issues, we know that the police or environmental health or any of the residents associations can lodge those review proceedings. But what we know, evidence, is that this doesn't cause a problem anywhere else and it's not somewhere where we've needed, it's not something that we've needed to deal with. So members of the committee, in all of the circumstances, I would concentrate, please, on what's relevant. Alcohol sales, how it's done, how we promote the licensing objectives, and I'd invite you to grant the application from seven till midnight because nobody, uh, none of the experts have asked for any of any different hours subject to the conditions that we've agreed with the authority. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. OK, so we've had given everyone the opportunity to make their case. Now we've come to an end of this item. I ask that all parties please leave the meeting room so that committee members have an opportunity to deliberate and make a decision on the application. The parties will be notified of the decision in writing within five working days of this meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Simon. Thank you very much. Thank you, members. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.